Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of Larissa Talks today, uh, April the 24th. Um, this is a place that we have, Larissa Talks is a program, as I tell you every, every week that we are together here, that we start uh, when it starts the quarantine, right? So this is a way where we're gonna be speaking with uh, local, states, national and global actors. Uh, if we, if we, you, we're gonna be addressing pertinent topics about all times and specifically what happened now in this moment, post and pre and what we're doing right now. Uh, this time for quarantine, we will be doing Spanish on Tuesday at 4 p.m. and in English on Thursdays at 4 p.m. too. After we pass uh, this moment, I don't know what is gonna happen if we're gonna do only once a week or if we're going to do, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen, but for now I am here standing up for all my friends that I collecting through all my years as a real estate agent and a realtor. We want to know our guest point of view uh, as a person, as a realtor, and as a community leaders. So each program has a name, right? So and this program has a name, how real estate leaders handle business during these times, right? Uh, we are going to generate a message of transition. We're going to give you hope. We're trying to give you uh, any expectation that you think that our guests can respond to your questions. I want to invite you for please free, be, feel free also to take the YouTube uh, that we put already on the chat and promote it if you want with your friends, you can do that too. And also uh, we're gonna have a good time too because we are very good friends and we have the same thing in common. We love our industry and we love our associations and we love our customers. So, and we are uh, leaders uh, in our community. So I want to start with uh, the only gentleman that we have today that we have here. Let's go with Jesse. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Azim Jeza. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of our panelists because I want you to know how important they are and how hard they're working for everything that they have. So Azim is original from Vancouver, Canada, but Azim lived in Las Vegas for the past 21 years. He's an active local and state realtor. He's married with two kids and his wife, Sarah, which is really cool. They both are very patient, passionate to building relationships and travels. So Asim is a past chair of the Las Vegas Realtors Global Business Committee, as well as past chair of the Nevada Realtor Global Committee. Both committees received the NAR Global Platinum and Gold Awards the same year that he was the chairman. He also shared the LB, the Las Vegas Realtor Association YPN committee and served two years at, on the Canadian Real Estate Association's Global Committee. So currently he served as a state and local RPAC Board of Trustee, as well as the Nevada Realtor Legislative Committee. In addition, he's the chair of LBR Political Affairs Committee Political Advisory Committee and ARPAC Fundraising Group. I remember those days. Outside <laughs> of those days, I seem to support Las Vegas Golden Knights. Okay, so also we have with us uh, Tiffany Curry. She's a realtor in Houston, Texas. She's a luxury real estate broker. She has received uh, many top honors, including the Luxury for Look, the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing. She's a multi-million dollar guild for successful selling million dollar homes. She's a past Houston, like me, we are both, Houston Realtor of the Year, but I was in my association. She, she becomes to be the youngest in Houston, in the history of Houston. She's also, she got a lot of things cool here. She's also Houston Business Journal Top 40 Under 40. Tiffany received her highest honor today, having been inducted into the National Civic Rights Hall of Fame in 2019. She served on the National Executive Committee and Realtor Party Community Engagements as the President's liaison to ARIA, NAREP, NAREP, and NAGLAR. Tiffany has soared from a top producing agent specializing in global and luxury, and she is the youngest owner in a major metropolitan market at its first 100% individual black owner of a 
share Hathaway franchise in the world. Okay, okay, that is awesome. Okay. So you see how many people do it we have. Also, we have my little sister that I love, Diana Galavin. <laughs> we have too many things to say together, but um, Diana decides to be mother of Carlitos and an excellent wife and an excellent daughter. She's also a graduate of the University of North uh, Florida with a Bachelor of, of Arts in Political Science and Philosophy, where her focus Oh my God, you do that to me, Diana, really. Where her focus <laughs> was in international relations. She has owned several companies in the import export sector. She lives in Jacksonville, right? And in construction. Uh, Diana has traveled around the globe and has made many connections prior to entering real estate. Diana is a broker associated with Waxon Realty and is a top producer in North Florida converting the Sam Jones and the Greater Jacksonville and the Beaches. She's also a CIPS, a recipient for CRS. She's also graduated as a GRI. And she, with me too, we, we combine these. We are uh, excellent indoors, the C2EX from NAR. Diana and her team, people that relocate to Florida from everywhere in the world. Her expertise is in assisting buyers, sellers, and investors navigate the real estate transaction. But Diana also is a strong believer in community, housing and growth, and is involved in many leadership levels. She's secretary for the Northeast Association, Florida Association of Realtors, and she served as a commissioner for the Jacksonville Housing and Community Development Commission. So we have people really involved here, right? Is immediate past chair person. She was my chair. I was also like you, as him. I was fundraising chair for the state of Florida, and she was my chair person for the realtor, uh, realtor party coordinating committee at Florida Realtors. As well, she's a director for NAR. She also was the past Global Forum Advisory Board uh, chair for National Association of Realtors, and was also twice, not one, twice the global chair for Florida Realtors, okay? So here we are, and I just want to know, how are you, my friends? Wonderful, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be joined by, you know, all three of these leaders here today and everybody else across the world that's tuning in to Larissa Talks. And thank you so much for, for starting this up during our quarantine time and giving us something to do and to share among not only our real estate community, but for everybody, you know, just to have some insight, to hear a little bit about real estate and just um, for, for positive thinking. Yes. Okay, well, how about you, Tiffany, a little quick, because we have some questions that I want to start. Yes, well, I, just want to, I am actually doing really great. I think this time has given me a lot of time to settle in, settle down, and look at business from a completely unique perspective and uh, for the future. So I'm kind of, it's unfortunate what's going on, but I think it's a good lesson for us to kind of take a step back, breathe a little bit, breathe for a moment, and take this in and kind of look at not just business, but life as we knew it different. So I'm excited. And I'm excited that you're doing this because this is a big deal, especially yes. having you do it, Larissa, because I think it's, it brings a unique perspective and a, a global audience, which I think is important and what's needed right now. Yes, we are very important to the globe and to the, everybody. You know, uh, uh, we here in the United States, we have this uh, respect for the real estate uh, for the real estate associate, right? A licensee. Mm -hmm. So we have this respect, and I believe that we have the, the responsibility to keep our our clients and our fellow realtors that they trust in in whatever we can bring them if they don't have the, the if they never been out of their local area. So they will be able to listen to us through this a uh, platform. So how about you, Asim? Well other than needing a haircut really bad, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> No, things are. Oh, and your wife? I don't know. I, you can see yeah. it's starting to get a little long here. And the funny thing is, I'm actually literally selling my hairdresser's home right now. And, she, and she's cut wow. my hair for about 15 years and she's moving to Dallas. And so uh, I'm going to have to find someone new. So 
Um, <laughs> but things are going good here. You know, um, the city, of course, is struggling. I'm sure like most cities, you know, with our casinos, that's about 25 or 30 percent of our workforce mm -hmm. is literally out of work right now. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're a resilient city. Um, there seems to be a lot of stuff happening with our, you know, charitable groups and things like that, taking care of people. So, you know, we're finding this sense of community. Um, you know, hope, I'm just like everyone, I want this to end as quick as possible. But uh, like you guys have all said too, there's some, you know, uh, key takeaways or little jewels in this, um, you know, for, for those of us that are, that are not facing the illness or losing friends or family. But I think that we always being in this position, right? Uh, we are our fact leaders and we are always in this position because we have maybe tornadoes. And I'm so sorry, Texas, uh, sending you a lot of our love. We knew yesterday in Oklahoma too, they have some tornadoes and in their way. So we, we as a realtors, we've been in the relief. We've been always, we will always working together in any type of situation, hurricanes or any type of situations in any way, anywhere in the United States that we are there. So we are always realtor with the heart, right? right. So do you think, how, what do you think it's changed besides the part that we are giving more now, maybe? I think we always been giving uh, at least us for here, but beside that, what do you think is the radical change that the industry has given in each of your states? And I'm gonna leave Diana because she can talk. I am, we are both in Florida, but I know she can give us a better, she's on the top, so she can give a better vision. How do you see Diana? It sounds like a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, do you want me to start? Yes. All right, so, you know. I appointed you. <laughs> I think, you know, we have a lot of opportunities right now. There's so much change happening. And I think we're going to start, well, we're going to continue to see change. And, you know, I, I, there's no new normal. You know, when I hear the word new normal, which is not a favorite word of mine right now, mm. this is our normal. And I think we need to sh shift, pivot, and be able to position ourselves for the future. Like you mentioned, Larissa, you know, realtors are really the core of the community. And I think that is our opportunity to shine and really show our value to not only our customers, but to our neighbors, to our business owners, or people that we just come in contact with. We're doing what we do every single day. Nothing has changed. You know, right now, you know, I'm getting more phone calls, people asking me, um, about the forbearance and what that de deferment means to them. You know, they're not necessarily looking to buy or sell right now, but they're just wanting that information. Small mm -hmm. business owners, they're wanting to know what that self-employment um, clause means to them, you know, where we're all still navigating and we're, we're wanting more information, but they're concerned about their employees and sustaining their business. We have the homeowners that are just in their house saying, hey, listen, that light that I've been wanting to fix for three years, I finally have the time to fix it. So people are calling saying, so should I do this to my home or should I hold off? Or do you think you know this upgrade is gonna give me value down the road? Again, those people are not necessarily, necessarily looking to buy or sell now, but they're looking for information. And they're looking to us as leaders in our community to be able to guide them. And I think right now is a really time for us to shine and showcase what we actually do. Because we don't just open doors, anybody can open a door. Mm -hmm. you know, we actually bring value. And I think yeah. that's like that pivot and that change right now that the people that are really engaging and staying connected are shining and you can definitely see it. Yes, I think the same thing as you think. I think this is a time where we are taking the real seriously that we are uh, uh, in Spanish, it's un asesor immobiliario, that we are somebody that uh, uh, advocate for them and we are somebody that we are not just an open, open doors, right? We are also more than that and we have more than 180 things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things is exactly what Diana said that I want to come back later regarding the, the stimulus package and things like that, but I want to hear what it says uh, Tiffany. So I would say, um, I think the beauty of all of this is that we're seeing people, as particularly locally, our agents being a lot more personable. So they are reaching out and they're calling clients now and they're talking to them about everything but real estate. You know, real estate is the last thing that comes up 
on those calls, they're actually calling to check on people, which is the simplest thing, but it's the most important component of relationships that when we're so busy, we forget about, or we just don't get to it. It's not that the agents don't care, because um, of course, realtors are the heart of, of the community, but you're so wrapped up in the transactions and what the clients need and making sure their inspections are properly negotiated, making sure the repairs are done. So you're in the moment and you're in those things. And now we're seeing people take a step back and they're just making those calls to say, hey, how are you? You know, how is work? You know, how's the family? You know, and that's, I think, a big deal. And I think for us as real estate professionals, I think it really helps us in this particular time because people are going to see us different um, because Several of us were doing it, but for the most part, you guys know that most people were not doing it because they were so busy. And then when you were doing it, for those of us that were, you know, the clients were busy. They were busy. They were busy in their jobs. They were busy doing those things. And I think right now we have their undivided attention, which is so rare because they're at home now. So they're actually listening to us rather than just getting through the calls of us being on their phone saying, how you doing? And they're like, yeah, you know, I'm busy. I, I got to do this with the kids. I got to take the kids to soccer. Or I'm working on a project for work. Thanks for calling, checking on me. I'm doing well. Now they're actually having real conversations. And this is the point where I, I tell our agents here, now you're dealing with real people. You know, now it's not just a pass through phone call. Now it's actually an engagement. So I think that mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Locally, we've seen a lot of agents. I'm so proud of them actually going out in the communities. Um, we saw yesterday, one of the agents had, um, a truck, um, a goodies truck that was serving like little beverages and little snacks um, that she had paid for to be in the community. And they had a social distancing um, like party for that community. And so everybody was six feet away with their gloves on and their masks on, but they were able to go up to this truck and it was great for that small business. And I think that's what we have to remember as realtors. What I really loved about that, it was two things. It was doing something for the community, engaging the community, bringing people out because as we know, we, we're so busy sometimes, even though we live in the same communities, we don't take a lot of time to, to socialize. And so even though they're doing it at a social distance, we're seeing that now. And so it, it, it's nice to see that in addition to supporting small business, because I think that's what a lot of people um, forget, even though, and I know you're gonna talk about the stimulus package, even though there will be some type of assistance, the reality of it for us guys is a lot of these small businesses are not going to be able to survive this. And I think we know with any business, the first five years are the most crucial. And for people that are in that window to have something like this come into place, they're going to get rocked. So I think as realtors, you know, we're blessed in the sense that we can still do virtual virtual showings. We can still do, we can still work. Whereas a lot of other people are not able to, and I'm seeing it with our existing clients, with our agents' clients. And it's like, how can we benefit these people? What can we do? We are the key and always the heart of the deal. So many things come through us. We have access and exposure to so many people. How do we connect these people so that they can still survive? Yes, and it's something that I always think because I went to Texas and I went to Las Vegas and of course I went to Jacksonville. They are some always before this event that I think took us in a position that we was really strong. The con our economy was really strong, thanks God. And I think real estate is one of the last uh, 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 going to be impact, right? And this time it's not an economic, uh, it's not a study as an economy problem, right? But I saw in your area, uh, Tiffany, and also in Las Vegas, not much. In Jacksonville, I saw too, but I saw it was a lot of people are already uh, 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 homeless, right? So, yes. so we always was also taking care for that particular thing because I was, I am a person that always here try to help the most that I can. But do you think uh, in your area, uh, Asim, I don't want to, to move the sequence of the questions, right? No. I just want to go back because we was having already in our systems and in our cities, a lot of homeless. So do you see that that comes more in your area now? Do you have the chance to go out and see what's going on besides the selling properties that we have to, that we saw also people that uh, are in the streets? You know, to truthfully answer your question, um, I think, you know, be not being as mobile as much, right? Not driving around to as many properties, not 
popping by clients and doing things like that. Um, you know, I'm staying closer to home, right? So my home and my office are about two miles apart. So, you know, I'm really not leaving a big, you know, this little couple mile radius. So uh, to be honest, I'm not seeing a lot. Um, I do know that, you know, our Realtor Association has done a lot of work with some food banks lately and, um, you know, our organ our charitable side of our Realtor Association. So, you know, they're doing, there's, there's the need out there. I've seen the pictures, you know, on the internet, and on the news about the food bank lineups and things. So um, I, yeah, I have no doubt that there's going to be an increased need for, um, you know, just social assistance and charitable giving and whatnot. And uh, I think we need to just make sure that we don't forget about that, right? Um, you know, just trying to trying to find a way to be stay involved in your community, right? It might have been easier because you maybe had a, a favorite charity or partner that, you know, wasn't close to your home. And, you know, it was easy to, you know, show up and just help out, right? There was a, there's a group here in town called Project 150, and they work with uh, homeless high school students, right? So kids that couch surf and things like that. Um, our team used to go down to their to their building once a month and just help them kind of reorganize the warehouse because they got tons of um, donations, right? And you know, there's volunteers working there and a couple paid staffers, but you know, we'd go every month and just kind of help them reorganize. They give us a job. Obviously, you can't just show up and do things like that anymore. So you know, I just encourage everyone to find a way. Um, you know, if it's through your church or if it's through um, you know maybe just the Red Cross or whatever food bank organizations, um, you know, homeless shelter type organizations yeah you're right i think you know there is going to be a greater need and we probably won't see it because you know we're staying home we're not out and about getting it into the communities where we see that stuff okay. and so you know my we can't become immune to it town, for example and i have my office i think that like yours too right uh we saw that we are not like 100 percent like we was before but mm -hmm. we have still we are our pending files in my office uh, I just got one today that fell through, but we have we we, we close all the files, right? That you do you see that in your market that your pending files are being closed, and how do you are being working? How the precautions that you are taking to show properties at the same time? Can you give me a little bit of your market in real estate right now and the precautions that you are taking for that? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, our market, I would suggest you just pull in some stats about an hour and a half ago. Um, so our actual um, cancellations are falling out of contract. That's about equal to what it was last year, like almost equal, like 700 and something to 710 to 715 or whatever. So it's almost identical. Um, but state. what we're seeing, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh no, for locally, for, for Las Vegas. For Las Vegas. What I'm seeing though is um, we're seeing a decline in the number of buyers. So um, this time last year, we had about 4,000-ish buyers and we're at about 2,400, or sorry, closings for this this month and we're at about 2400 so far um, over the last 30 days rolling 30 days um, and we're seeing more homes go on the market so and that's actually what surprised me is that our inventory has gone up about 1200 homes in the last month and Las, that Las Vegas is a place that many people do second homes it be, besides yeah. that, it's more established because it's a uh, uh, medical, they have the poor, they have a lot of stuff, but uh, you- A lot of military, yeah, Air Force Base. Too, and also Houston, you know, uh, yeah. uh, but Las Vegas, beside that, is a beautiful city. I think it's yeah. in base of the tourists, right? And the second market. What about, what other things that you have to offer as, a, as, a, as Las Vegas? This is a good time to come out. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Vegas is still, we still have, a shortage of homes just like everyone in the country right remember 2008 to 2014 or so there was very little new home construction when our market was you know at its bottom and starting to come back up well you know we're now experiencing and feeling that because there's a shortage of homes we have you know all those millennials are buying homes and you know even the next you know the next group what is it gen z i believe they're starting to get into home buying even um and then just vegas and nevada itself is a very tax friendly state um you know a lot of great for retirees like you talked about lots of good medical facilities um lots of military veterans retire here we have a big va hospital and we're you know we're four hours from la we're four hours from five hours from san diego and you know i tell people for you know flight wise we're one stop from anywhere in the world because you can get anywhere in the u.s non-stop to vegas right so you can go vegas to la vegas to houston vegas to atlanta vegas to new york and from there the whole world right you don't have to stop to go anywhere else so it's a great city. We love it. And, you know, we'll, we'll bounce back. We always have. We always will. And uh, just can't wait to see that day. Okay. Well, let's do a little pause right now because I have people that Victoria, 
Uh, I think that um, the thing is that I, Victoria. Hi. Hi, yes. Um, good, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for coming to Larissa Talks. Um, the first question I have for the panelists is, what are you doing to make your phone ring during this historic moment? So I'll take, that. I'll, I'll take that. So for, for us in Houston, um, basically what we are doing is we are doing a lot of virtual and social media marketing um, in addition to um, internet as far as emails and phone calls. So we are doing a lot of personal touch with people and a lot of things that what we're sending them, we're not sending them information on buying or selling a home. The thing that we're doing is we are checking in and building those relationships with people and keeping them abreast and informed. So I was just looking up an article that I sent out to our agents and to our clients um, last week, and it was from the Houston Chronicle. And um, the headline for it was, Cor coronavirus shows little measurable effect on Houston's March home sales. That's a big deal. People want to know how is this affecting the real estate market, especially as homeowners, they want to know has my property value gone down? That's the number one thing people want to know. So sending them that type of article um, for us to not only post it on the social media outlets, because that's where people are right now because they have nothing else to do, but also sending it to them via email and an update as a newsletter. Hey guys, this is what's going on in our current local market. And I think that that's what you have to remember. Real estate is local. So what's going on in another market is not necessarily what's going on in your market. So Houston in particular is a huge oil and gas market. Um, and of course we saw what happened with the price of oil and people are asking us, are you guys nervous? Um, I think everyone should be nervous actually, um, but I think it's not our only avenue. So the medical industry here is huge in the sense that we have our Texas Medical Center is one of the largest in the United States. It's larger than downtown New York. Um, so it has every hospital you can think of, and more importantly, it has MD Anderson Cancer Center. It also has some of the best research centers, which a lot of people come here from all over the world every year just to be in the Texas Medical Center for the best health care. Um, and those hospitals offer some of the best health care in the world. So with this virus in tow, we're seeing more and more people come closer in because they want to be here in case something happens for their treatment. And so I think um, for us, it's just finding research and talking with our hospital districts to see what they're doing to treat the virus and taking that information and that data and pushing it out to our clients. That's something they want to know. So that's, that's a whole new perspective where they're not looking at us anymore as just realtors. They're like looking at us as, as valuable resources of people that are in the know um, that are presenting them with information that they have to have right now. And so we've seen um, quite a few people at the bottom of those emails, um, you know, just it has not only our contact information, but they can call us anytime if they want to know if that has affected the value of their property. And that's the key word. So we have had so much response to that because people right now are thinking, you know, not necessarily about selling. They're thinking about refinancing because they're watching the rates go down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they want to know, like, if I stay here, how much money can I save on my mortgage? And so we're starting to hear the conversations of people realizing, oh, wow, my mortgage can go down that much. Well, hey, listen, you know, at, when this is all over at some point, I'll refinance this and maybe next year sometime, I'll look at making this my rental property. Mm -hmm. You know, since the mortgage has gone down substantially and me actually looking for the home, another home that I would actually want to live in because their lifestyle has changed. So perfect. I, I am with you 100 percent. Whatever you said uh, regarding the giving information valuable to the customers, I was uh, against to start promoting properties for sale. I have a lot of project managers that are calling me, hey, what do we need to do this? We need to do that. And I, I was like skeptical to promote it because I think this is a moment that we need to be united. And this is a moment that we don't, they know that we are sell, they are, we are realtors and we sell properties, our influence, you know? So if we want to call our past customers and see how they are, um, somebody that uh, uh, you met and you want to know how they are, it's a good moment to do that and a good friend always. Uh, but I wanna know, beside I have uh, one of our audience as the 
hands uh, up. I don't know if you, uh, Diana, wants to keep your marketing a little bit. And I see Francisco Angulo from Miami has something to say. And he has the, let me give him a loud to talk. Hi, Francisco. Mommy's questions in the thing. He typed the question. Oh, he typed the questions. Okay. I was going to say it, but I I'm sorry. Uh, so, okay. That's okay. Francisco talks too much anyway, so. <laughs> Francisco. So if he, ta if, he ta if he already sent you, let's wait to Diana to say how her market is in Jacksonville, Florida. And then we go with you, Victoria, right away. Okay. Yes, Diana. So we definitely saw a, a decline in, in our market. Um, I think just the scare of the virus and the uncertainty of everything, you know, had everyone kind of just on pause. I was pulling stats today and taking a look at where our market is. And that sharp decline that we saw is now subsist. So we're pretty much right at almost a 50% recovery. So we're seeing buyer confidence come back. The thing is though, of course, like a lot of markets, our inventory is low. You know, we're a very, we're, we're growing city. You know, we have a lot of opportunity. People are coming in, not only for medical, but we have people relocating for military and our inventory is just really tight. The good thing though, is that we're seeing that the, the homes that are going on the market are, going for higher than they would this time last year. So if you take a look at it year over year, we're right where we needed to be. So we're not seeing any decrease in our purchase prices. So that's definitely good news for, um, for definitely our buyers and our sellers. Um, most of our buyers now though are gravitating towards uh, new construction. Um, and I think we're going to see that being a trend. We started to see that trend a couple of years ago, and I think we're just going to continue to move forward with that, um, especially with people wanting um, stuff that's moving ready or very clean. And, you know, I can see some um, differentiations in the market. The good news is definitely top of mind right now for everybody. So I definitely see that trend continuing. But for, for our or sellers, you know, there are buyers in the market and those looky loos that were just going in and seeing a bunch of properties, they see 10 properties, 20, and they still didn't really know what they wanted. The buyers know what they want now. They're in a location for the last month. They're looking at the walls, they're looking at the floors, they're looking how they live, they see where they eat. They know exactly what they want and how their, their family dynamic lives. So they're being very specific with their wants and their needs, which is great because now you're seeing um, our showings are less because people know what they want and homes are going right off the market. For instance, I put a house on the market last week. We had limited hours, um, obviously abiding by all the CDC um, guidelines, but we had limited hours for a couple of different reasons. Um, there were two children at home. Um, there was someone homeschooling. They wanted to make sure that um, there wasn't a lot of foot traffic throughout the entire day. So we just tweaked how we did the marketing and also did the showing requests. Within two days, you know, with limited showings, we were able to get it under contract for, for, for a full price. Obviously it was priced right. But we're, we're seeing that if it's priced right, and even with, you know, the restrictions for showings, we're not seeing a decline in our sales. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. And, and how do you see the pending files? Pending files are down just a little bit, obviously, because if you take a look at what happened in the last month, but I'm going to, to venture to say that we're going to have an increase in pending files um, in the next week or so. I think the buyer right now, <clears throat> besides that know that what they want, they have enough time now to, to go up and go down, right, and save properties, and now they're going to see the famous sales estimate and things like that, uh, the Monster Z uh, for us that uh, we're going to give value to what they may need because they will not be able to, how, how, can I, how can they come here now and show you this property, you know? So now the listing agent and now an agent that is in, intelligent to marketing as a buyer's agent, is a good moment because now people are moving for serious purposes. Uh, of course, it's coming a lot of 
big money that is in uh, people has uh, cash in their banks that they want to move in the future. So we're going to see also a lot of opportunities. Uh, but I don't want to go to the next question because we have uh, uh, the questions for Victoria that I'm going to say for Francisco, right, Victoria? Francisco was having a question. Yes. His question was, how many realtors do you think are going to survive the financial impact of COVID-19? He understands that the last NAR count was about 1.4 million and that he remembers when the crisis of 2008, it went below 1 million. So how many do you think will survive after this? Diana? I think that's going to be a combination of things. Um, I think the first part to that, the first answer to that question is going to be how long does this last? I think that's the first thing. It depends on how long does this last and then how much damage is going to be done to the real estate market after the fallout. I think one of the things I think that's different now versus during the financial crash is that, you know, the government is has regulations in place for the banks not to foreclose on people um, so that they're now giving people time to add some of these months that they are forgiving, not forgiving, they're going to add them to the back of their loans. So that's going to save a lot of people from foreclosure, unless they're just careless to where they don't call in to get those extensions. Um, I truly think it's going to depend on how bad things get going forward. So particularly in Texas, um, the governor has said as, as early as tomorrow, they're going to start to slowly reopen certain things. So this is gonna get interesting. And I think that this gets real interesting because on Monday, they're gonna open even more um, places like you know restaurants and things like that. So this is gonna get interesting. I think the real question becomes is once they start their test states, it's like what I like to call them, that are gonna to start to open things back up. The real question is, how are our numbers going to go as far as new infections? That is going to be the key. If it's containable, then I think we're okay. If it is, if we see those numbers skyrocket and more and more people get sick, then that tells us we have a real problem, guys. And if, if that's the case, then that's going to really impact how our economy responds. And then that's when, with his question, as far as how many realtors are going to survive, um, it really becomes to how many industries are going to survive um, because that's really what we're based off of and so I would say if the market crashes like it did um, then if that happens now in the long run I think I don't think we'll go below a million um, just because I think people are at a place to where they're going to go and get pretty much 80 percent of the business is done by the top 20 percent of the agents so you have a lot of people right now that are actually not making a living selling real estate and I think that's the major thing that you have to remember is that there are other industries that they're working in or spouses that are working that are paying for their licenses. So I think it really becomes, you know, what happens in the economy um, and what happens to job opportunities. But I don't think it will go below one million. Um, I don't think we're in that desperate of a time. And the reason being is because what I've seen in the last month and what I think a lot of you have seen is the resilience from people to work at home. A lot of companies have adapted to their situations. And I think what we could expect to see, I, I would be um, reminiscent to see what commercial real estate is gonna look like. What, in terms of how many companies are now gonna realize that they can actually downsize on office space and basically send maybe 50% or more of their workforce at home, home and still get the same productivity. So I think we're going to see people adapt. I don't think we'll see a lot of companies just fold in, in terms of keeping their overhead so high. I think this has shown a lot of people that they can do business different and cut back on a lot of their overhead. So I, I think in any in any, anything, we're going to see the strong survive. Um, but I don't think it will dip below a million people. <clears throat> what do you think, Diana? How do I follow that up? You follow that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, no. Oh, sorry. Do you think the same? Uh, what? I, Diana, were you speaking? I'm sorry. Well, we was talking about a question yeah. that was from Francisco for what? Yeah, no, I, uh, so I do, I do think that, you know, there is going to be a, a 
a dip in real, the number of real estate agents, realtors out there. And because um, realtors are notorious for living by that curve, right? Like the up and down. Hey, I got a few in escrow and then I'm going to do nothing. And then I've got a few. And um, unfortunately, right, uh, not enough people are, um, I, I don't know how to word it. Uh, just financial, I'm just going to throw it out there. Financially savvy enough or, you know, to, to start putting money away and stuff, right? Um, you know, I you know, our grandmothers told us, right, save, put money away, right, 10, 10% for yourself, like every paycheck or whatever. And I don't think enough people do do that sort of stuff, that sort of thing. And as independent contractors, um, you know, I think we are going to suffer. If you look at the average stats for NAR, and you can see the, you know, the average income of a realtor, um, which is all public information, you guys can Google it if you want, I don't even want to throw it out there. Um, it's not a pretty number. And so um, I do hope that the government is able to quickly get the help and the, the funds out there that they, you know, that they promised. I know some people have received it, some have not. Um, I, know, you know, I know the small business stuff hasn't been as successful as I think people have hoped it to be. Um, but at the end of the day, right, like we have to rely on ourselves and we have to rely on our community. And so just, you know, if, if this isn't a lesson, guys, like let's start putting, you know, three, six months of money away. So then if something like this ever happens again, you know, we're not waiting for the government to to help us out and you know and i'm not saying it's wrong to and the government stopped all the business and i get you know it was this is a you know for lack of a you know better term a man caused disaster right like government said no more working so for a lot of people or work from home so we need you know we need to respect that and make sure that we know we're keeping the people around us safe and healthy and to do that um you know they're they're trying to do their best to to make people whole so we have some muscle memory in our economy. I've used that term a lot. If our, you know, the quicker we can get out of this, the quicker our economy will turn around and bounce back. I think too that we have a, a, this, the the price the, the, the price <laughs> what a realtor the average uh, age for a realtor is over sixty and most of them are already retirees that they have already maybe you know some sustainable monthly but if you see also the numbers maybe Diana that has the stats and Tiffany and you are seeing maybe can be with me with my numbers for example what I'm seeing is like we have maybe a 10 10.5 or 13 percent of our agents doing business during these past days so what I think is that we have a big number of us of realtors and they are not doing uh, any closings, usually they don't do, most realtors, they don't do closings every month, but at least once a month. But if you don't see that move, and then if you are a business owner too, and you come back to your office when you open again, and you have two months of debt, you see, or two months already that you pay and you don't produce the same amount, because I think we are like uh, 30% or 40% of our capacities to, to closings. Uh, uh, that's what I think. But what, the way that I see my numbers in my market is about less than 15% of people are doing business right now. So everybody wants to jump, including the people over 60s, that they are, some of them are very good in technology. What I think is that a combination now for the basic and the young people that can help uh, continue that people are over a not technology savvy that they can help in these times. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, again, it's just, you're right. I mean, and Tiffany made that point. I've heard Brian Buffini say, you know, you've, everyone's heard the 80-20, right? The Pareto principle. Mm -hmm. When real estate, it's 93-7, right? 93% of the business is done by 7% of the, the realtors. And so, yeah, um, you. I, you know, I'm not on the MLS committee. I don't know if those in, that information is public in your markets, but here in Las Vegas, we don't get to see, you know, we don't, we can't individually track people or whatnot from the agent level, maybe from the broker level you can, and I'm, I'm not a broker. I don't have my own office, mm -hmm. um, but I've heard kind of through the rumor mill that even before this, it was only about 20 or 25% of realtors in the Las Vegas association were opening MLS every month. So, you know, about three out of four people um, are, yeah, weekend realtors, if you will, or part-time realtors, or maybe just have their license. And my wife's one of them now. She stopped, you know, she retired from real estate January 1st. Um, and, but, you know, she's still licensed. We're still paying her dues and stuff, but I can't tell you the last time she opened MLS. So, you know, maybe there's situations like that. But uh, yeah, I think, again, those, who, those of us who are, you know, back to the earlier question about what are you doing to make your phone ring? Well, my phone plays offense too, right? Not just defense. Like I'm picking it up and I'm calling my people and talking with them and checking on them. 
And, uh, you know, that's, we earn our money between transactions. You know, it's not the 45 days of, you know, the contract to closing. It's the, uh, the five years in between. And, you know, when people are calling for the refinance information, like Diana talked about, the forbearance information, um, the referral for, hey, you know what, I've got, I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm still employed. Um, I need some help with a, maybe a bathroom remodel or something while, while, you know, everyone's out of work and we're home. Like, you know, we're, we're the source for that. And, you know, we just got to, keep staying in touch and those of us who are doing that are going to keep working and those people who are not you know unfortunately you know will will find themselves and again as brian buffini says reintroduce themselves to the marketplace okay very good so what do you think is a bit is a good time for sale right now what do you say uh, uh somebody that owns a project that they have stopped the construction right now and they started again what do you think is going to be the future for those uh, uh, mark the buy the seller market in your area. Do you think, and it's going to be how how we're going to be able to show some properties in the future? Do you think it's going to change the entire uh, showing styles that we are doing so the sellers can feel more comfortable now with us? Or what, how do you think that it's going to be with the sellers? Is good time for them to sell? Uh, what are the tools that you have available for them for put the properties on the market and how do you prevent yourself to to don't get uh, exposed I'll, I'll take that i think we've already seen that shift and those that are doing business right now have already changed and adapted to what our customers want now and be being able to reach them in their home from your home mm -hmm. so for for instance our team, uh, you know, we're doing what, you know, I'm sure a lot of us are doing, you know, we're doing the video conferencing on whatever platform that customer feels comfortable on. You know, we're explaining our value and what we're doing step by step virtually. Of course, we're doing, you know, the, the videos and, you know, the, the tours and all that, but something that's a little different that I just came across is one of my customers um, did not want anybody in their home for, for even photos. So I said, well, I was like, at least let me get in there so that I could take some photos. And I used a tool, um, Box Brownie, uh, which is through NER, mm -hmm. and I was able to take high quality photos and then I sent it to them to touch it up just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and we were able to put it on the market and get it under contract. That was the first time that I had someone tell me that they didn't want professional photos, that they would rather me take them with my professional camera and then have it retouched. So I think we have to really adapt and move to what our customers want because, you know, when we go into a listing agreement or a listing appointment, and we tell them, oh, and we have video, and then we're going to do a virtual tour, and then we're going to do it. Not all customers want that. So I think we need to remember to be like cautious of what they want and need right now and how they want their homes marketed as well. And I think something that you just say that I think that you all agree with me also, if we see, if we are taking now, it's an advice for everybody's taking photos and videos right now, be careful because there are a lot of things that uh, attach to the security of our, our clients. So we need to be careful on the videos, what we're posting, we need to remember that it's still, uh, it's not only the coronavirus, it's not the only thing in life. Remember that we have also TIFFers, that we have people, bad intentions, that we have also other type of uh, things that happen in life and continue, the life continue, the bad people are still bad. You know, maybe they, maybe they, Wash a little bit of the scene, but some people I hope Jesus touched their heart and they can change, but they are still bad people. So we need to be careful for what we videotape our sellers' homes, right? Are you I, would, I would say yeah. so. And I think um, that, um, I think Diana brought up a good, good point because one of the things that we are doing and that's changed with the sellers, first of all, I would say now is in my opinion, the best time to put the homes on the market. And the reason being is I will say that because the, the real damage in the economy has not come yet. People are still employed. Yes, there are some people that are furloughed and yes, there are some people that have been downsized, 
but not as many as what we're going to see going forward. So I think being able to, as a buyer, being able to buy your home now and have that security, especially if you are a renter, I think it's so crucial right now because as you can see, the homeowners can call the mortgage company and they're going to understand. You don't even have to explain it. The one question they will ask you are, are you calling? Is this a result of COVID-19? And when you say yes, that's all to that conversation. They're going to go into the next step, which is doing your forbearance. Whereas if you're renting with your landlord, each state is different. But the reality of it is the landlords still want the rent. And so for we're letting people know, too, you know, that are that are renters in our market, uh, that are our clients that are on the fence and they're asking that question. Do you think I should buy now or do you think I should wait to see if I'm going to still have a job in a few months? And our question, our response to them is very simple and it's very real. If you are a rental in a few months when you lose your job and you can't pay that rent, you're going to eventually have to deal with possibly getting out. If you are a homeowner and you're securing your home, first off, you are in, in your own comforts of your own home. So you're no longer in a shared space in an apartment building. So that's number one for safety. The second thing is financial security. You're in a home. If you do lose your job, the banks understand what's going on. They're not going to say, okay, you can't pay. We want you out next month. They're not putting a notice on your door three days after for late payments. So home ownership is going to give them security. It's going to give them something to look forward to. And the other thing that we're also letting people know, I think is crucial and important for our agents and for the consumers um, is they need to know as well. Yes. Even if the market tanks and we go into a recession, Real estate is one of those things that is resilient. It goes down, but it comes back up. If you are renting and your rents are not going to go down, and if they do so much, right? And when this is all over, let's just say we do go through uh, a recession for two or three years. Well, on the four, fourth or fifth year, guess what? Your property value has resumed, right? And nine times out of 10, it's gone up and it's going to continue to go up. So it's financial security. And if you're going to lose your job, in, in a few months or at any point this year, I think it's better and more security for you to be in a home as a homeowner right now. If you are thinking about selling, this is a time where your property value has not yet declined. If you're going to sell, you would want to sell while values are still holding rather than in a recession when the values have tanked. Good. Somebody wants to say something else more or he's being- I'll waiting. follow up on that. Just, no, I think, yeah, I agree with, there's going to be like, like I said, this this stoppage, this downturn is caused by, you know, the government stopping work or telling people to stay at home. The real, you know, the real damage that we may see is when people do go back to work, maybe the economy, well, it won't be screaming like it was in February. And so then there are going to be like true real layoffs, not because, you know, we're not allowed to be open, but because we don't have the business. And that's when some of these programs will stop and not, you know, cover people. And so, yeah, I think Tiffany's right. You know, if you want to sell, this is a great time to jump in if you need to sell or, you know, you plan on being in your home for a bunch of years and you're happy, stay. That's fine. It is what it is. But, you know, if you're looking for that move up home and you need to you need to make a move, this is a like a really good time to do it. I 100 percent agree with Tiffany. And, uh, you know, like, you know, Diana, Diana said, you're not going to have the looky lose. Right. You're not going to have just random people walking through your home. People are very serious right now. So yes. if you're priced right, you're on the market now and you need to be on the market now, you're very likely going to get, you know, a good offer for your home, a fair offer for your home and uh, find a find a way to make it work. So going back to what we have the bless here in the United States. So we have people seeing from other countries that they speak English and also some audience and from a Spanish speaker that they also speak English. So we have something here that many other countries has. Uh, we, we like it or not, uh, we are receiving, uh, some people already received already in their checks of uh, $1,200 per family member in the house, 500 for the kids, and plus the, all the SBA's uh, uh, relief money that we are going to see. And thanks God to the National Association of Realtors that we being included in the, in the stimulus package as a... Uh, as an independent contractor, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that we can apply for unemployment. Do you saw that move on employment for many realtors in your areas? Because <clears throat> I don't know, we, we will be able, I don't know, do you, what do you think about the stimulus package and also the, 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 the 1099 that we can be able to, 
to present to collect unemployment. Well, it doesn't seem like the states seem to be set up yet to take it. Um, I know here in Nevada, I've seen people online commenting about it. Um, and, you know, the system was never set up to have independent contractors do it. So, you know, you're asking, uh, you're asking, you know, the governments, the federal governments telling the state governments to do stuff that they're not equipped to do yet. So, you know, it may be, you know, a little bit longer than anybody expects. And I just, you know, encourage people to be patient and, you know, just know that unfortunately it is what it is and it'll, it'll get there soon enough. I don't think they're, you know, twiddling their thumbs. They probably don't want to be yelled at either. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do see a lot of people doing it. It'd be interesting to see how it all works and falls out because, you know, again, you know, we're, someone once told me like, you know, the type of business we're in, you know, you're, you're eat what you kill sort of business, if you will, right, for lack of a better term. And we're not, you know, it's, we've always had ups and downs in our industry, and this is a down. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what do they, you know, how are they going to offer that, that money out? How are they going to say, you know, you're truly unemployed, or you're truly been affected? You know, you did X amount of business last, this year, this is going to, you know, you're going to get more money than you did in your business. I, I'm not sure how that's all going to work out. Um, you know, again, just my encouragement to anyone who's waiting for unemployment is pick up your phone and start playing offense and start calling people, checking on them and, uh, you know, be in that resource because at some point somebody, either them or someone they know is going to need to buy or sell for whatever reason. And uh, if you're the person out there helping, you're the person that's, you know, closest to the front of their mind when, uh, when they're looking for a realtor. Excellent. Thank you so much for your response. And Victoria, we have any questions in the, from the public, please. Victoria? Um, yes. What are you doing to keep yourself and your clients positive? <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Well, I'll take that. One of the things that we are doing is we are doing um, some great inspirational quotes and then also sending them a lot of inspirational videos. So um, there are several and some of my clients have sent to me over the years and I've kind of always kind of squirreled them away and kept them. And so now we're actually sharing those with our agents and also with our clients just to let them know, remember, you know, you know, I, I don't want to be spiritual because I know everyone has different religions, but you know, we let them know, I remind people, you know, you just have to be real and let them know there is a higher power and everything happens for a reason. And what we're going through right now is in my personal opinion, a lesson, um, I mean, if you just look at the beauty of what's happening with nature, now that we have this stay at home, like we have a, a lot of horrible things going on as far as people losing their employment, but let's look at our earth. And then, especially with yesterday being earth day, I mean, just looking at Los Angeles, seeing a picture of Los Angeles without all this smog, looking at Las Vegas and just seeing the, the roads and everything so clear the and river, actually the rivers you can see you can see the fishes in the river and everything you, you can see, see and even in Italy right and, and those yeah. canals you're seeing that and then in Paris you're just seeing the world and then I saw something um, in a certain part of Africa where they had these lions just lying out in the road right and it was so many of them and then I saw a jellyfish going through one of the canals in another country and I was just like you know let me just stop and just recognize the beauty of this because I think we as people have gotten lost and so busy and so I don't think we meant to damage the world or our earth, but I think we forgot to how to really take care of it. And so I think you can find, um, so Celine Dion is one of my all time favorites. And I know she was playing in Vegas a few years ago. I saw it there. Canada, oh in Canada. Sammy's from Canada, living in Las yes. Vegas. The double whammy, I got her twice. Oh. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, but the, the thing is, she has a song and it says, let beauty come from the ashes. And I think we are in that season where we have to let beauty come from the ashes. I think, especially as realtors, you know, we're in a cyclical market. And just like Azim said, you know, it's up and down, it's up and down. This is not an industry for the faint. This is an industry where what he said, you basically eat what you kill, but not only that, it's what one of my clients told me earlier this week when I was talking to her on the phone and she was calling me just for some advice um, on some just in life. And I think that that's special when people can see you for more than just real estate, that they consider you a valuable resource and a true friend. I think that says so much. Mm -hmm. And she was calling and she's asking and she's 70 years old. 
you know? So she's almost twice my age. And she's like, you know, I respect you so much. And I want to hear what you have to say about this. And she was like, one of the things that people have to realize is, you know, in an industry, especially like what you're in, it is up and down. But what it, you have to find opportunity in any market. And I think as a salesperson, that's what we have to recognize. And I think as realtors, the ones that are working or the ones that want to work, and that's another way to say that too, is we have to realize and recognize opportunities. And most importantly, and this is something that I think we need to think about while we're at home, as realtors, we need to find not only opportunities for ourselves, but opportunities for our clients. And we're going to have to be on the lookout and what industries they're in on what industries maybe they should go to if they're going to still be able to maintain and make a living because their success is our success and vice versa. Exactly. Exactly. What about you, Diana? Yeah. You know, it, it's never a good time to have a pandemic, you know, but it's springtime and you know, <laughs> it's time to renew. It's a time to restore. It's time to reset. And I think, you know, even though we're in this situation and we're in a crisis, I think there's an opportunity for us to take that step back and really reassess not only our businesses, but our lives. Um, I've been doing a lot of gardening. Um, I'm I saw. a lot of um, splitting off my bromeliads and, you know, leaving little gifts, you know, not just at my customer's door, but just my neighbors and my friends. Because I think it's just time to try to clear your mind and then really see where you are as a person and have that empathy for other people as well. And when you make that phone call, you listen and you do that active listening. You're not when you're waiting to, you know, say something or ready to close, because it's not about that right now. It's really being able to hear that person. And once they know that they've been heard, you've done something for them. You know, not everybody is staying positive. Everyone knows me. I'm super positive and always trying to, you know, see something good and everything. But Sometimes, you know, the reality is it's, it's not okay for everyone and that's okay. And for people to be heard, I think right now is, is the most important thing because then they're having that takeaway. And I, I called a friend of mine, she was, she was down because, you know, the beaches were closed and our parks were closed. open yesterday. I saw they opened. We're too. reopened now. We're reopened now. But that was something critical for her because she did a lot of walking. That's how she cleared her mind. And she didn't have a backyard. She lived in an apartment. So for her, yeah. that was major. So being able to reconnect with her and just say, hey, guess what? Now the parks are open with social distancing, you know, and to hear that joy and be able to share that and come full circle and close that circle with the people we're connecting with right now, I think is really what's very important. And obviously we wanna to be top of mind, but I think we need to be sensitive to where we're at. And like Tiffany said, you know, and share that inspirational quote or send that text or something that's going to be able to be motivating for them because, you know, we're here, we're doing Zooms, we're able to see our friends. And, you know, most of the time, most realtors, you know, we, we, we do that naturally, but not everybody does that naturally. So we have to check on our, our colleagues, our friends, our our family. So I, I think that is really where, where our shift and in, in how we do business is going to come about. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I have a comment that has Francisco that he just sent. And I don't, I'm not sure what if he was saying for Tiffany or for you because I just opened and he said, or Asim, he said, comment what you just said is the reflection, it's not eyes to a sim. Is the reflection, it's not that technology, is not aligned to the new reality. I'm sorry, so I don't quite understand. So is technology not aligned to like the new reality, like the real estate technology? And I'm gonna answer the question the way I want to because I, I just have a thought in my head. Talking about uh, employment, he said, uh, what you just said is the reflection, mm -hmm. it's not that technology is not aligned to the new reality. Oh, about what you said regarding the 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 the, the in the unemployment the, systems. 
Well, yeah, and you know, that's that's one example of it, certainly. And then you look at, um, you know, I think just in real estate in general too, right? A lot of our technology um, seems to be trying to replace the interactive part, right? The relationship part. Um, and guys, like, I, you know, I'm maybe preaching to the choir on this call, um, but real estate is a relationship business, right? It is a contact sport. It is not it's not transactional. It was never meant to be transactional. You know, um, like I said, you know, I tell people I earn my paycheck, you know, the five years between the time you buy and sell, not the 45 days. And um, I think, again, if, you know, as long as we make sure that we're touching people, connecting people, we'll be fine. Um, and, you know, same thing with those, those government organizations and stuff that are the government, um, you know, entities, the folks that have communicated best, have been the ones that have been okay, right? If it's the ones that go radio silent, um, you know, you've seen, you know, I know you're gonna get into some stimulus stuff, but you know, the big banks just got hammered over this paycheck protection program. And it's because they didn't communicate with their members and their, their um, you know, their business, their clients about what's happening, right? I'm with Bank of America. And I know like people who applied with them just went like applied day one and didn't hear anything till after they ran out of money. So. You know, same thing with us. If we're not connecting with people, you know, we're going we're gonna to be the bad guys too. And that's where relational uh, real estate is hugely important. And, uh, you know, that can be a lesson for, I guess, in, in any industry. Just communicate and be, out, be touching people and connecting with people, ex being open with people and everything will be okay. People will trust you. Yes, this is for the people who are more seasoned, right? But he said mm -hmm. uh, realtors, some realtors are broken. Uh, and he said mm -hmm. also that COVID-19 was the proof that not all existing technology goes with the reality, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there are some people who are having old technology and this is the moment maybe to, to do some changes. Some people are a little late and everybody's yeah. running right now to do some video, to put yeah. everything right now on different platforms and everybody's running to the same direction right now. Mm -hmm. And I think like we all say, you know, three, uh, all four uh, have the, I think the same uh, common uh, uh, thing that uh, we need to go to see, to, to humanize ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to go, we was hurry too fast. We was in a rush. Uh, I was always in a rush and I continue in a rush because I am very busy. I am extremely busy, but I'm telling you something. And Diana know me very well. And some people are in the audience. I am a person, no matter how fast I am, I always got a chance to stop and see what happened to the others. And I think for some people are this more easy than for others, but always we need to take care for us, not only because of this problem. And I think we have a big wall right now that stop us uh, some people thought that it was like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the owner of the world. And right now, no matter what you are, who you are, what you do, who you, what do you have in the bank and what color you are or what nationality you are. Right now, we are all in the same boat. Same, there are some countries, they are in very difficult times. There are some countries that we're going to be speaking next week in our Larissa talk on four o'clock on Tuesday. This is in Spanish. We're going to have Eduardo Santos from past president for Puerto Rico Association of Realtors. And we're going to have from the Dominican Republic, the broker owner for Global Properties Realty, Jorge Montilla, and one of his stellar uh, real estate agents there, Scarlett Peguero. And we're going to be talking a little bit of what is happening in other countries, uh, because there are some countries, they, they are close at two o'clock. So they are up, they are some countries that they are only going women's on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays and Mondays and Wednesday out and they are the men's going out on Tuesdays and Thursdays and they have a specific time from eight to twelve. So you only can do one day to supermarket or you can do bank. You cannot do both. So there are some handicaps in other countries that we are just I open these talks especially uh, in my Florida and in my Ocala where I live in my Florida and then I'm open to my United States because I want to go out to look for other uh, horizons through my thoughts that we can generate hope and we can teach them how to do. If I don't know how we are doing here, everybody, if we are in the same page, how can we tell other people, tell other people how, what they need to do in this moment? So I appreciate your moment here with me, uh, I, 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 I don't have more gratitude to say from the bottom of my heart. And I want to know, Victoria, if we have another question. If not, I have the last questions for you so we can close. Victoria, how we are in questions and saludos.
We have saludos from Mariela Bartens too again. Hi, Mariela. Yes, we have some saludos oh, <laughs> um, from, from, from Orlando Ortiz and Mariela Bartens. And I have one more question for you guys. Yeah. So how do you see the market, the agents and the clients? Are they scared, ready to invest? What are your, what is your vision? So how are you seeing everyone? Uh, yes, all of the above, right? Like there, there's um, some uncertainty out there, certainly. There's um, some people who are waiting to capitalize on potential, you know, downward pressure on pricing. Um, there's people that need to move because of their jobs. Um, there's a little bit of everything out there. Um, I, you know, I, there's no one size fits all answer because this isn't normal. This isn't, a, you know, a normal slow decline in a, you know, in the beginning of a recession. This was like Larissa said, we just hit a wall, literally ran into a wall. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a little bit of everything is, I think is my answer. And, you know, we just have to be, um, you know, speak to people and answer the questions that they have and be, give as much information as we can and that, you know, that we know about and uh, walk beside them because we've never done it either. We just learning. What do you get yeah. say, Diana? Yeah, I think exactly. You're seeing all emotions. You know, you mm -hmm. have people that previously had their home on the market where traditionally their their home would have been under contract already, um, just because of price point wise or location and such. And we're seeing those some days on market a little longer. Um, mm -hmm. Now our market is picking up, but people still have that uncertainty. You know, we're seeing more and more backup offers in our area. Uh, we always had them before, but we're seeing now more so um, in case people do decide to fall apart and, you know, people mm -hmm. think that they may have an option, an opportunity to get that home more now because you never know what's going to happen with financing or job security. So the sellers are also willing to continue to market the home um, and accept those backup offers. But I think it's just, you know, it's, it's an uncertain time. You know, you know, we're all navigating through this together. And what I'm seeing is more patience. And it's okay to say, you know what, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Let me find out. Let me do a little bit more research. Let me get back to you. And in that high tech, now I want the answer. You better answer your phone in two minutes or, you know, the lead is gone. Now I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that those relationships, even among other agents back and forth, you know, we're communicating a little differently and that we're, we're able to say, okay, you know, hey, let me call you back in one minute or in 10 minutes, let me finish this worksheet with my kid, you know, or, you know, I think we're all a little bit more understanding mm -hmm. and we're just trying to, to see how this is gonna move together. Perfect. And you, Tiffany, little short. We are close to we are close to finish the program. Yes. Well, yes, I, I agree with everything uh, Diana and Azim said, and I, I will leave us all with this. Um, we have to think about we said it before, but we have to remember doing business different. So one of my clients um, was tr transferring. Um, he was a referral from YPN. And he was his agent was selling his house. They were in a fast market. It went under contract. Well, the buyer the week before closing gets furloughed, so they can't get their loan. And so that means that he can't get his loan because he has to close on that house in order to buy a new one, even though he has capital, he still needs to do that. So um, luckily it, they put it back on the market, it goes under contract the next day. So he has a buyer, another buyer the next day, right? So we would think everything is okay because it's gonna close at the end of May. Wrong, because now he finds <laughs> out he's getting furloughed. And he's getting furloughed for 60 days. So all of a sudden he can't, I mean, so it's a domino effect. So we're going to have to think different and smart. So uh, the listing agent and I were able to come up with an agreement um, because for her sellers, it makes sense to have them there and to wait until his furlough is over in those 60 days. And so what they're going to do is a temporary residential lease where he and his family whose stuff arrives late today as we speak, um, will still be able to actually move in tomorrow under that lease. And they will be able to just extend the closing when his furlough is over. So I want you guys to think different. And then also when we're showing the homes, 
I know social distance is what people are wanting to do, but remember, if the home is occupied and you don't really know the person that well that you're showing, you have to be careful and not let them just roam around by themselves in certain yeah. areas of people's homes. Yes, it's a security thing that we need to be careful to. It's another thing that we need to go through. So for now, we get into the end of these Larissa Talks for this Thursday, April the 23rd, 2020. I appreciate my beautiful friend, Diana Galavis. Thank you so much. My handsome friend, Asim Giza. My, my papa friend, Tiffany Curry. And I hope to see you soon. And um, maybe we see next week in the beginning of the May, we're gonna see each other in any meetings in NAR uh, virtually because we cannot see each other in Washington, DC. Right. Give us a hug. One day we're gonna be giving a big hug again and I love you so much. And I thank you to being Larissa Talks. You wanna say something? Bye-bye, thank you. Stay healthy, Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. We helped you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You, Victoria. Bye. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. I'll see you next Tuesday in Spanish at 4 o'clock p.m. Eduardo Santos from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Jorge Montilla y Scarlett Peguero. Thank you so much. <laughs>